Welcome to another message from the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to read from about verse number 6 onward on the Amplified Bible up to verse number 19 where we finished in the last message. The last message was the slaughter of innocents. The slaughter of innocent children. Now Herod the great probably killed between 50 and 75 children in that slaughter of innocent children. I'd like to say this. Probably in the state of California today, they probably killed at least, slaughtered at least that many little children in abortions. That is terrible because the children from age two down were no less children or no more children than those in the wombs of their mothers today. Let's go on here and read what we have to read here. Starting with verse number six. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are not in any way least are insignificant among the chief cities of Judah. For from you shall come forth a ruler, a leader, who will govern and shepherd my people Israel. And that was a fulfillment of Micah 5 and 2. Then Herod sent for wise men. He sent for the wise men, the magi, astrologers, secretly, whispering, accurately to the last point ascertained from them the time of the appearing of the star. That is how long the star had made itself visible since its rising in the east. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search out the child carefully and diligently and when you have found him bring me word that I too may come and worship him we know that this was a lie this is the devil's tricks the devil's tricks but the devil is always busy he's never sleeping it doesn't seem like but all the devil's tricks that he can try to pull on God's people God overthrows and here he did here when the Lord called out his little insignificant assembly his church Satan started a hundred when the Lord sent forth his son made of a woman in the fullness of time made of a woman made under the law to redeem us Satan set out to try to murder him from the very beginning and this is it and when they had listened to the king they were they went on their way and lo pay attention it do behold the star which had been seen in the east in its rising went before them until it came and stood over the place where the ch young child was. And when they saw the star, they were thrilled with ecstatic joy. And going into the house, they saw the child. Now, the child wasn't in a manger, Marilyn. No. It wasn't in a manger. They're in a house now. They're not in a manger. Now, this time of year, this is December the 25th. This is Christmas Day, 2018. That child has been portrayed in nativity scenes all over. And yet, the Magi did not come to the cave where Jesus was born, the hole in the wall where he's born, but they're in a house now, in a home. 
the child would marry his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Evidently, Joseph got a job becoming a stonemason in this town, probably building houses in Bethlehem. Maybe he had built one for himself. We do not know. Then opening their treasure bags, they presented to him a kingly gifts. And we know that there were three gifts. There were three royal gifts given to Jesus. Gold, which is a worthy gift to give to a king. Frankincense, which is a, a type of perfume. Uh, it is a it is incense that you burn in a palace or in temples in the temple. And the last one is opium. As I said before, this opium is a rich man's medicine. Now, like I said in the last message, Doc Holliday had tuberculosis and was prescribed to him with alcohol with opium or laudanum. You put opium in the alcohol and you drink it. That's how you administered it. That's how they administered opium all the way back for dysentery, for ulcerated colitis, for diverticulitis, for spastic colon, Crohn's disease, whatever they had, and all type of lung and breathing disorders. That's what it was used for. But only the rich could afford it. So this is a rich man's gift. And receiving an answer to their asking, they were divinely instructed and warned in a dream, in a hypnotic, hypnotic trance, not to go back to Herod. Now what does Herod mean? You remember what Herod means? Herod. We know that this Herod was placed in power in 37 B.C. by Anthony and Cleopatra. He died about 4 B.C. And don't worry about it. That's not before Christ's birth because Jesus was born between probably between 7 and 10 B.C. because the calendar adjustments. And Herod, his name comes from the word hero and ode. Hero means hero. That's where we get our English word hero, heros and ode. The song of the hero, or songs of the hero. And so they departed to their own country in a different way, in a different road, is what it actually says. And verse number 13, Now after they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a hypnotic trance, again, hypnose, and said, Get up tenderly and take unto you the young child and his mother, and flee to Egyptos. Egyptos is the Greek word for Egypt. The Hebrew word for Egypt is Mizraim. Mizraim means what? River. Red mud and canal banks, because Egypt was an irrigated land. It didn't depend on just flooding and uh, uh, rain, because they don't get much rain in Egypt. Flee to Egyptos, and remain there until I tell you otherwise, for Herod intends to search for the child in order to murder him, destroy him. The slaughter of the innocents begins here. Now, I said in the last message that down in Egypt they have a lot of stonemasons because they're building something all the time, tombs and things, and so readily that Joseph could go to work. And having risen, he took the child and his mother by night. Nyctos, the word nyctos, our word night, comes right out of it. By darkness and withdrew to Egypt. And remained there until Herod's death, which was 4 B.C. Now Jesus is about what? Four or five years old when he goes back and he goes into the land of Nazareth where he starts his stonemason business again. And you that... Um, think he was a carpenter, you can do that if you want to. But there aren't any carpenter terms used. There are stonemason terms used in the Bible. And this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken of by the prophet, out of Egypt shall I call my son, and Hosea 11 and verse 1. 
Then Herod, when he had realized that he had been misled by the wise men, by the magi, the magistrates, and was furiously and enraged, and he sent and put to death all the male children in Bethlehem and in all the surrounding country, probably between 50 and 75 children innocents he had slaughtered, who were two years old and under, reckoning according to the date which he had investigated and diligently and learned exactly from the wise men, the Magi. And there probably weren't only three of them. There may have been 30 or 40 or 10 or 15 or 300, a caravan of them. And they were fulfilled, and then was fulfilled what was spoken of by the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Remember what Jeremiah means, Marilyn? Jeremiah. Jeremiah means he whom Jehovah launches forth. He whom Jehovah launches forth. That's what Jeremiah means. And a voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. That's where basically where Rachel was buried, where she had Benjamin. And she refused to be comforted because they were no more. Jeremiah 31 and verse 15. Verse number 19 now, and Herod, and when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord again appears unto Joseph in a dream while he's in Egypt and he said rise up tenderly and take unto you the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel when he uses the land of Israel he means what that covenant land the land that I have given not the land of Canaan but the land of Israel for those who sought the child's life are dead now let's go back to verse number 19 and read it from the Greek text, Telu te santos, de tu herodu, idu angelos kiriu, phonete kat aner to Yosef in Egypto. And having died the Herod, this was about what time? About 4 B.C. Jesus is around uh, 4 to 6 or 7 years old down in Egypt. Behold, angel of the Lord, he appeared for Nete, for himself according to a dream, to the Joseph in Egypt. So we know the angel of the Lord is still down in Egypt, isn't he? The angel of the Lord is all over. The angel of the Lord is, I think, in this house some of the times to protecting Marilyn and, and me from uh, malefactors. 20. Lagon Agathes, para la bay, to paideon, kai tain, matera, autu, kai poru, Est gay Erislam Israel that is Tethanes Kalsin Gar Hoy Zetontes And having risen you take with you the child and the mother of him literally the mother of it that word Pideon there is neuter. He's not considered a boy yet. He's young. And you go, Ace gain Israel unto the land of Israel. They have died, the ones seeking, Herod and all of his uh, compadres, seeking the life of that child, Tain Sekain to Paideo. Seeking the life, the soul of that child, and this and say and Satan always inspired these uh, rascals doing his bidding. Satan's gophers. Herod was nothing but Satan's gopher. That's all. 
go for this and go for that. Go do this and go do that. Satan's gophers. That's the title of this message, Satan's Gophers. Hode egeithes para la bain, to pideon kai tain matera, altu kai es elthain, es gay Israel. Moreover, furthermore on down the road, that's what day means here, the one having risen, having been caused to rise, he took the child, the Pideon, the young child, he's still very young, Jesus is. Now just think about this. Do you think the old devil let Jesus alone down there in the, in the land of Egypt? You think the old devil didn't know that he was down there? And there's, We don't have any recordings of what in what way that Satan tried to kill him down there, but I'm sure he did. The child and the mother of him, the mater, matera. Our word mother just about comes straight out of Greek, matera. And he entered unto the land. Now the word acer, extension, limitation, the thought of verbal action in the Greek preposition there on page 119, the analytical Greek lexicon. He went into the land of Israel and quite through it, all the way up there to Nazareth. Nazareth is where he was. That's where he lived before Jesus was born. 22. Akusos de Hote, Archilaos, Basileo te Judea, Ante tu patros auto, Herodu efo bethe, eke apelthane, crematistes, de cot, aner, Ana Corusen es te merates Galileas. And having heard that Achilles, he reigns of Judea instead of the father of him, Herod. He was caused to fear there to go, having been warned. According to the dream, he deported unto parts of Galilee. Now, this area where Jesus is going to be raised is the freeway of the Middle East. This is the freeway of the Middle East, the Achaean Highway. Through where Jesus was from there on out when Jesus begins his ministry, this is the crossroads of the Middle East world right there. And... Word didn't tra travel by telegraph. It didn't travel by telephone. It traveled by caravans. And this area was a crossroads of the Middle East. And what Jesus was going to do was going to be noised abroad from this area. It was the right place. Verse number 23. Kai Elthon Kato Kaysen. Ace Polin Legomenen Nazareth. Nazareth means, it comes from the word Nazar, which means root. It also means to divide. Now, the tree has got limbs above and limbs below. The limbs below are called roots. And however wide limbs are on the tree, usually the roots are the same on most trees. And Nazar means the root or the branch out of dry ground, and this is where Jesus was going to come from. Nazareth, Hopos, Plerothe, To, Rathen, Dia, Ton, Propheton, Hote, Nazareos, Clethe, Sete. And having come, he down homed, he dwelled. Kata Oikos, Kata Okio, that means that he made his home down there in the city being called Nazareth so that it was again fulfilled the thing having been spoken through and by the agency of the prophet because Nazarene 
he shall be called a citizen, citizen of Nazareth. Now this is not to be confused with a Nazarite. You remember what a Nazarite is out there? Don, over there in Wales, you remember what a Nazarite is? How about out there in, uh, in Texas, Australia, Marna? You remember what a Nazarite is? A Nazarite is someone that takes a voluntary oath of a priest. And they don't cut their hair. They don't go near women. They don't eat grapes and they don't drink wine. And this Nazarite is different than a Nazarene. A Nazarene is a citizen of Nazareth. A Nazarite is a voluntary priest. John the Baptist was a Nazarite. Samson was a Nazarite. Now in Isaiah 11 and 1, Isaiah 60 and 21, it's a fulfillment of this. Now let's go back and read this in the Amplified Bible and we go up to chapter 3 in this message. Verse number 19, we'll go back there and refresh our minds. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a hypnotic trance to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise up and tenderly take, that word in there is in there, that word tenderly. Rise up and tenderly take unto you the child. You are the caretaker of that child. You know, Joseph should have been the king of Israel. But instead of that, he's a hired hand. He's a worker. Out there, he was, he's uh, been hired to cut stones and do whatever stone masons do. Rise up with those strong hands, but tenderly. Have you ever looked at a stone mason? How about a bricklayer? Have you ever looked at a bricklayer's hands? They're rough. Like guys out in the oil fields, throwing chain. That's what they used to do anyway. Throwing chain is where... We used to whip chain up. I was a cat head man. Uh, I threw chain. You take a big piece of chain that's pretty good size, about that big uh, as it is, uh, larger than the chains, most of the chains that you hook up trailers onto a car with, the safety chain, about the size of some of the big ones. You take that chain and it's hooked to a cat head, which is a, a clutch-mounted uh, device that, pulls a cable and to that cable is tied a piece of chain and to that chain is tied a piece of soft rope braided out of manila rope and you put this thing you make a ring around a box what they call a box on a piece of drill pipe and they and you're putting in another pipe in the ground and you drop that pin of that down into that box and then you you throw that chain in the air, and the driller over there pulls on this uh, lever, and it shoots it with sparks flying down through there. That's what you call throwing chain. I can throw chain with my right foot, my left head, right, my left foot, my right foot, and my right hand or my left hand, probably with my head. I could throw chain back in those days. Those chains are tough. Now let's go on. Rise and tenderly, even though you got these rough, grisly hands. Rise and tenderly take unto you the child and his mother. And go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. The whole bunch. The slaughter of the innocents. All the murderers are gone now. Then he awoke and he arose. And tenderly took the child and his mother. Look at that word tenderly. I want you to realize this grizzled, hard-working man tenderly took that child. God had deposited that child in his care while he was on this earth until he lived and, and breathed his last breath. And he did it. He did it. Now all of you out there, mothers and, and fathers, God has deposited your children under your hands for you to give them the best you got in this world. 
Give them the best you got. Your children are deposited unto you. To raise them in what? The fear and the admonition of the Lord. And moms and dads, when that little child is little, when he looks to you, he looks up as if he is, you are the smartest person in the world. When they get about 13 years old, it totally changes. The flying saucers have come and taken their brains and they won't bring them back until they're 30 or 40 years old. But the, the children, when they look up at you, they see the love of God and love them like that. Correct them when they need to be corrected, but to love them and have them be able to, to trust you with all of their life. And when they grow up, you teach them that you are the one that protected them, that raised them, that fed them, that clothed them for the service of God and that God will be greater than you ever were. God will love you more than your mother and more than your father. When you turn your children into the hands of God and they ask him to forgive them and forgive, uh, and forgive them of our sins, and they repent of their sins, they'll, God will love them more than you ever loved them. Then he awoke and rose and tenderly took the child and his mother. And he came into the land of Israel. Now, I don't know whether she'd had a child by this time or not, but there could have been other children that were tagging along also, babies. We know that Mary had probably six or seven, eight children. He came into the land of Israel. That word Israel there, that's the covenanted land of God. Not the land of Canaan, but the land of Israel. But because he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea, and that's the area where he was, that's Bethlehem, in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go through there. And being divinely warned in a hypnotic trance, he withdrew to the region of Galilee. Now the, the priest and the scribes said that not a prophet, not, no prophet ever came out of Galilee. What was a great prophet that came out of Galilee? What was a great prophet that came out of Galilee? That was Jonah. And Jesus used that Jonah to be a type of him. Jonah that was dead in the belly of the fish, the dog is what it says, the great sea animal of whatever. He was dead for three days and three nights. He lifted up his voice in Hades, in Sheol, and spoke unto God. And Jesus used that as a type of himself. Verse number 23, And he went and dwelled in a town called Nazareth. Root. So that what was spoken through the prophets, through the prophets might be fulfilled. And there was a lot of prophets. And he shall be called a Nazarene, meaning branch, separated, divided one. Isaiah 11 and verse 1. I hope that these messages have touched your heart and drawn you closer to God. Mothers and fathers, you have a great responsibility to raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. You've got a great responsibility to be the best person you can be in this world, to be the best mother and best father. You don't compete with anybody else. You are following God's instruction. We talked about the murder of the innocents the murder of the innocent children. There are people in this area from here to Oildale that have raised children for one thing, as they are anchors to keep them in this country or to get welfare payments for those children, and that's all. They treat them like cattle. You can go in these cities and look in the what we might call the ghettos, and see children that are mean no more to the mother and a distant father than a paycheck from the welfare office. That's miserable. 
They're murdering children like Herod tried to murder children, the murder of the innocents, the slaughter of the innocents. I've seen people like that get saved. I've seen them turn their lives around. When I was pastor of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church 40, almost 50 years ago, I started a bus ministry. And I knocked on every door in East Bakersfield. Every door, every street. And I saw things. I was raised in poverty, extreme poverty. But I saw children that were put in poverty by their mothers and their suspect fathers. It's pitiful. I saw that. And I brought those children to church. And I preached the gospel to them the best I could. And I prayed. And some of those children grew up in church. I remember one family very especially. The father of that family threatened to kill me and burn my house down. Uh, he had... I think five or six children all together. And I was going door to door. They even lived on the same street where I lived. And all these little hoodlums were there. They were hoodlums. All these boys were hoodlums. They were in trouble every day at school. They were drinking and taping dope at the time they were old enough to do it. And I went there and I talked to the mother and she bowed her head and she asked the Lord to save her soul. She began to take those children to church. And the father was an alcoholic and a, a, just a no good person really. He was a, the kind of this, a sire, that's all he was of these children. He was not a father to them at all. But they had to go to school all the time to bail their kids out, go and talk to the principals and the teachers and things because the kids were in trouble all the time. One by one, those boys asked the Lord to forgive them of their sins and their lives changed. Young lives were changed. Young lives were changed. The mother was doing the best she could. She was being submissive to her husband. She was always wild and would get drunk and, and behave badly. But now she was an obedient wife. She was doing everything that God told her to do. And a man just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Instead of being thankful that those children were no longer derelicts, that he hadn't had to run down and do things and get them out of trouble and go visit them in juvenile hall, he was mad. Mad. Wanted to kill me. He didn't want those children in church. Many years later, I had moved to Nevada. I was coming down and visiting in the neighborhood where I were, and, and up came this boy and woman, young man and young woman, with a little child, two little children. And he came up to me and he said, Are you Dr. Phillips? I said, Yes. He said, I'm one of the boys that live down the street here. You led me to the Lord. He said, two of my brothers were killed by gangsters. They were shot and killed and knifed and things. But he said, I thank God that you led us to the Lord. I remember one night, I had taken them to a youth rally in Wasco, California, and they were in my van. And they had heard the gospel preached. I had preached the gospel that night. And on the way back, they asked me to pull that van over on the side of the road, and they wanted to pray and ask the Lord to forgive them. There were two or three of them that night. One by one, they were saved, all of them, the mother and all the children. He said, I was saved on that trip back from Wasco that night. He said, my brothers always tried to live the Lord for the Lord. He said, our father was a real problem, and he went back to prison. I said, I didn't know he was in prison. He said, yes, he was in prison. I said, what did he do? And he said, he started robbing liquor stores and service stations again. And it clicked in my head. That man had robbed me when I was about 15 years old working in a service station. 
He held a Harrington Richardson nine inch barrel gun on me, 22 pistol. I saw his face when they told me that. That's why that man hated me, because I sent him to prison. I identified him on the lineup. And instead of the man repenting and going on and asking the Lord to forgive him, he went back right into that lifestyle. His mother divorced him and married a good Christian man. He went to prison one his way and she went her way. And no children were saved. That woman did exactly what she was supposed to do. There was nothing else she could do but be the mother that she was, take them to children, take them to church. In spite of her husband, try to be obedient to him as much as he could. But he just got worse and worse and worse. Further and further away. He heard me preach the gospel. I preached the gospel to him. But he would not hear. Mothers and fathers, do your best for your children. Do your best because you love God. And God has put them in your hands and deposited them with you. Our Father, we send this message out to your people. I pray if there's one lost out there like that man was, that you'll break their heart and that they will not fight but surrender their lives to you. Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us and thank you for the children you've given me out there to feed. Father, I pray for each and every one of them and I thank you for each and every one. I thank you for all of them. Father, help us continue to grow at discovertheword.com and to glorify you even more. I thank you we've had three of the top downloads in the world within a week. That's amazing. And we don't have advertisement, as you know. Help us to grow. Help people to give. Help us to continue to preach your word. Forgive me where I failed you, Father. Help me to continue on with my not so good health help me to be faithful to you in every way give me the strength for your honor, for your glory and for your sake my prayer, amen